Hello, this is Leslie, my name is Keith, and this is Slade on Slade. And today, we are going to do random questions. Woo! <laughs> so my first question for you is, do you have a goal for how much you write a day? Well, I like to write 3,000 words a day. A little less, a little more sometimes. i got a 10-month-old son, so sometimes it's a little less. Uh, but it's fun as hell, though. Yeah. So... 3,000. Uh, that's just me. And what is your favorite time to write? Oh, man. Kids go to bed. 10 p.m. Sitting at the computer. I got nothing to do for three hours, but type it, type, click it, clap. Can anyone write a book? Oh, yeah. My daughter and I wrote a children's book, and she came up with most of the ideas. I say, no matter what it is, no matter what your confidence level is, write something. Look at your toaster. Give it a name, write a story about it. Write a three-page story about it. Oh, and I cannot eat on camera, you know what? <laughs> and how did you come up with the title of your book? You mean The House of Ribbons? Wink. <laughs> yes. I like the idea of a large mansion style plantation house with 20 to 40 cottages where people are living and they live in a really nice, tight-knit community. And the house itself would be given a name, and that's where you would live. And I just think the House of Ribbons sounds great. Plus, no one else out there has a book called The House of Ribbons. <laughs> so when you go and type it in, you don't get up nine other people's names. Where you're like, oh, I don't know what book to buy. I'm not buying any of these books. Yep. Does your chapters have to have a certain number of pages in them? Well, in the House of Ribbons, wink, I started off with just a few pages per chapter. But then I ultimately end up setting on, I like 10 pages a chapter. I like a book with small digestible chapters, but when you give me one of those big mat style books, one of those big thick ass ones, I like a nice long chapter. Because as soon as the chapter ends and you start a new thing and it, it kind of throws me off. It throws me out my game. So I want it to be uninterrupted. Okay. So my next question for you is, should you self-edit your own book? Good Lord, no. Why? Oh, oh, my God. Okay. So here I am, okay? Dashing, good-looking as the day <laughs> is long. Best part about me, I'm humble as hell. So I'm thinking, I'm just going to self-edit this. I'm not a total moron. You know, I know how to screw on a lid of jelly. But then when I sat down for my second revision, I realized something. I was stupid. I mean, like, really stupid. I didn't know how to use a comma. I didn't know where this or that went. So I talked to a friend who wrote the book, I Am Dracula, right here. Excellent book. Brand new reprint with uh, new edits in it by Dean Anderson. And I asked him, and he said you would shoot yourself in the foot, so to speak, if you didn't have an editor. So I looked at a few editors. I happened upon the one that I am with now. And when I got my first chapter back edited, I had realized that my mama done dropped me on my head. I might be dumb as hell. After editing the book, Three times on my own, I had made a mistake seven words in. Seven. I got six words before God said, Psst, you stupid as fuck. So, the long and the short of it. Editing is very expensive. Uh, my book is 225,000 words, so it's going to be a bit of a the cha-ching. Uh, if you have a smaller book, it's going to be less of a cha-ching. But either way, it's still going to be really, really expensive. I have no clue where to look on this fucking camera. It's bugging me the hell out. Uh, oh, what's over there? I'm looking over here like some kind of moron. So, long story short, the majority of us out there, we don't have the money. You just don't, you know? You're just one bad divorce. You're one car problem away. You're one random UFO abduction away from not having the money that you put into the book, or you put into it, and then that happens, and now you're completely effed in the A. 
See, I know how to use my alphabet. So, your book is going to stand on its own legs one way or the other. But if you get one editor out there and he just tears you up, I said editor, I meant critique, get person. Fucking go back. This is where we cut it, cut it here, and a three, two, one. If you self edit and you get one of those people who critique your shit in the newspaper or whatever, critic, there you go, couldn't remember that word. I'm a great writer now, huh? You get a critic tear you up like Leatherface with a chainsaw. That's it, man. Your book series, Gone with the Wind on the very first book. If you spend the money with an editor, they're going to make sure that any of the ways you're going to stumble and fall, they're going to be there for you. They're going to make sure you don't stumble and fall because their name's going to be attached to it in some way, shape, or form. So you do well. Your book does, does well. Other people are going to want to have them edit. So the long and the short of it is get one of those penny jars to just throw your pocket change in there left and right. and Or you can do like me. You just sell a bunch of your valuable ass toys. Yes. Took a lifetime to collect them. eBay. <laughs> eBay, there you go. I didn't need that He-Man collection anyways. <laughs> oh, He-Man. Cut. So my next question for you is, why should you have beta readers? Beta readers is going to help you in a big way. I have five, uh, not including my wife. And so... Technically, it's six. I've, as you can tell, I'm not good at math. So I got six beta readers. And one is male. So they, you do the math. I don't care. Uh, so my buddy who's a male likes to give me, like, notes after notes. And I keep telling him I don't have room for that, man, because my character is not going to do this and that. Okay? It's just, you just tell me, is this outlandish and too stupid? You, you know? So I don't have room for notes, and it's not because I have a big ego or anything. It's because he wants to input what he thinks the character would do, as opposed to reading and absorbing the character. And him and I talk all the time. We see each other almost every day anyways. But with the female beta readers, which I like, because I have a bunch of female characters, and uh, some of them are strong leads, I like their input because... I like to make sure that I haven't accidentally wrote a female character in a man's voice. I want you to read that and go, oh, a woman definitely could have wrote that. So, also, don't we make sure that you don't have any continuity errors? And stuff yeah, like beta that. readers help with continuity error. Yeah, I knew I was getting off on a tangent there. <laughs> uh, continuity errors. Uh, they, they catch the little things like, hey, you know, you said that this girl had blonde hair and now all of a sudden she's got brown hair. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes something like that's easy. It's just a quick fix. You just go back and type, 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 and you fix it. Or you just, and she magically turned her hair blonde with a spell. It's just whatever. Uh, so it, it's important. It's just, but you're not always going to be able to find those. There are places that you can come out or go into, I don't know, the internet somewhere, and you could find beta readers. If you're really super afraid that somebody's going to steal your idea or your book and spend thousands of dollars editing and this, that, and the other thing, let me just stop your fears right there. Ain't nobody got time for that shit, okay? There's plenty of people out there that love to read raw prototype stories because if the book turns out to be the next Harry Potter, they can say, I was their beta reader. And uh, you never know. You might get a new friend out of it. So my last question for you is, should you copyright your any script? Every time you hit that button with the edits, I either got something in my mouth and I'm chewing it or I'm drinking it. You notice that? <laughs> Give me five seconds. All right, so the question was, have I always been this sexy? Yes. Of course. Oh, copyright? Yeah, copyright your manuscript. Listen, I got good advice uh, also again from Dean. Copywriting, it doesn't cost that much money. I mean, it takes like six months to get your... Six months. <laughs> six months to get you get this letter and it was like, boom, you own this shit. Uh, and then you're going to get a lot of self-publishers uh, houses. What are they called? Publishing houses? Yes. It's a publishing house that you self-publish and you pay them money. Yeah, you so pay you them money to do... Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Let me just bleep that out right off the bat. 
uh, I'm not paying you money for me to self-publish so you can put your name on my shit and then I got to give you the whole book first off. If somebody says, hey, I want to help publish your book, give me the entire book right now. Take a train. Okay, kick rocks, get out of here. Make sure you do your research if you go with a publishing house. They only want a little bit. Okay, uh, what would you say, 10,000 words? Mm -hmm. 10,000 words or a couple of chapters. If somebody says, just give me the whole book, you can't trust that. Okay, you don't do that. Um, you know, there are legal steps you need to take when you enter into uh, the financial contract that is going with an editor. But when it comes to copywriting, uh, you have that. And that's the leg you need to stand on in case your crazy aunt Betty, who now became your beta reader, stole your shit. And I'll point out case in point. Uh, Stephanie Myers wrote the Twilight books. Mm -hmm. And she had so much of The Midnight Sun written. And she had given out to X amount of people. And I believe it was family members, maybe. I don't remember. I, I don't really remember. So I'm not 100% sure on that. But uh, uh, the five that she gave out were different. It was the same exact thing, but there were differences in it. And that's and I do that with my beta readers too, because I took a page right out of Stephanie Myers. Because if somebody leaks that online, okay, that could spoil your book, okay. And this person leaked it online. What a confidence of trust breaker that was right there. What a douchebag move. She knew exactly who did it because there were certain things in the manuscript that she gave right there. The copyright allows you to stand up in court and go, I own this. This is my IP. This is my intellectual property. Intellectual property. You can tell she's a smart one. Thank God I'm handsome and humble. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, so, uh, copyright. 35 bucks, I copyrighted. I, I had copywritten two books uh, and the children's book. So, technically, I don't really call it children's books a, a, a full book, but it's a book. Uh, and it gave me the peace of mind because now I know if for some reason somebody were to uh, run off of my stuff, I had the, the legal leg to stand on. And it can't hurt. Plus, it's really cool to know that your stuff's in the Library of Congress. So that is all we have for you today. Um, if you liked our content, go, don't forget to like and subscribe. Boom! <laughs> and if you want to get more updates on the books that he is writing, go ahead and hit us on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. I know some of you can't sleep at night. You're like, what the... I need an update right now. Listen, I can only take so many phone calls at night. And I got two beta readers, you know exactly who I'm talking to, who like to call, like, you know what? I think Sophia would say this and that. I'm like, it's three in the morning. I just laid down. And I don't think Sophia would have said that. Then I wake up and I go, Sophia would have said that. <laughs> I got off. I don't even know what I'm saying. This is the goodbye video. I'm like, I want to hold you closer. Like, for some reason. <laughs> Check out my fresh-ass shirt. That's Freddie and Jason right there. Also, if you go ahead and hit up our Patreon page so we can go ahead and get some of those edits done, you could enter into a contest. Yeah, we're still doing that contest where your name can be in my book. So you can say, hey, Grandma, check out. I'm a legendary status bad guy. Because I got some legendary bad guys, don't I? You do. I know. That's pretty cool. And if not, hey... Just sharing the video helps me immensely, and I greatly appreciate it. So we will see you guys next time. Bye.